welcome to Growing Deeper Daily with Gateway Church. I'm looking forward today to getting into the Word of God together with you. Today we are ending our first look at the first half of the book of Isaiah, really through chapter 39. It's in these first 39 chapters that the prophet Isaiah, speaking in the 8th century BC to the nation of Israel, uh, has highlighted this aspect of judgment, that there is judgment, but there is hope for Jerusalem. There is judgment, but there is hope for the nations when they come to God truly. Uh, and at the end of chapter 39 and 30, uh, really uh, 37 through 30, 38 and 39, we, we see the historical setting for the, for the final judgment that will be faced in Jerusalem and Judea in the south. Uh, the Assyrians have taken captive the ten tribes to the north. In the south, however, Hezekiah is king and rules and reigns on the throne. Uh, he is seeing what is happening to his neighbors. He is seeing what is the threat around him. And he is being um, confronted with, with unique challenge as the king. Will he trust in the Lord? Uh, we see here in this section that uh, in chapter 36, where Sennacherib, the king in Assyria, sends messengers and tells Hezekiah, be fearful. I'm going to come and I'm going to take that your kingship, the hope for Jerusalem, that it's going to end. So Hezekiah uh, receives a message from Isaiah. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Yet still, Hezekiah in his own life, in his own heart, has to process this threat around him and ask himself, will he be afraid or will he trust in the Lord? What we see here, I think, in the example of Hezekiah, as well as a wonderful invitation for us, when we feel threatened by the challenges in our world, uh, when we feel threatened by those around us that are causing us or tempting us to not trust and follow God, will we come before the Lord and seek him, trusting him? There's a beautiful section here in verse 14 of chapter 37. It says, Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers. These were the king of Assyria's messengers who sent that letter. Do not trust in your God. Don't let your God deceive you, was the words of Sennacherib's leaders. You will be given into my hand. He said, when, when Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it, he went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord and prayed. I love that sequence. He receives this word and reads it. Then he goes to the temple. He lays out this letter from these messengers and he prays. What a great pattern for us to follow as well. What a great uh, opportunity for us to consider the challenges before us. Uh, oftentimes, I, I, I remind myself of this text when I'm faced with really challenging issues, uh, perhaps in, in, in loving and leading my family, perhaps in being a witness, uh, perhaps in loving and leading our church. Um, oftentimes, I will lay out literal pieces of paper with the challenges written on them and get on my knees and pray. What are those for you today? What are those challenges? What are those threats? What are those uncertain outcomes before you that you are seeking God for? I think the invitation here from Hezekiah, uh, his example, is one we could follow. Receive it. Read it. Lay it before the Lord and pray. Some of us today need to do that. When he does so, he says he prayed to the Lord Enthroned above, incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see and hear all the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to mock the living God. Truly, the kings have laid waste to all the nations and their lands. They've cast their gods into the fire. For there were no gods but the work of men's hands, wood, men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they were destroyed. So now, O Lord, our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone are the Lord. I love it. This is an amazing section of scripture. Read Hezekiah's prayer here in, uh, in chapter 37 of Isaiah. He brings, he receives this letter, he reads it, he lays it before the Lord, and he prays. And notice what he prays. 
He prays, God, just don't make my life comfortable. He prays, God, don't just beat down my enemies so they see how great I am and how strong Hezekiah is. He says, God, do it so that people may know that you alone are the Lord. He says, the other nations that have been face to face with the king of Assyria, they have fallen. Those idols of wood and stone have been destroyed because they are not real. God, I come before you with this prayer that you might answer it. Not that I might be lifted up, but that people may know you are the Lord. See, that's the final piece in praying a prayer like Hezekiah. As we lay our burdens before our Lord, we receive it. We lay it out. We pray and we ask for God's will and God's name to be exalted. That's the difference. It's in the New Testament. Praying, thy will be done, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is that prayer? It's a prayer similar to the one of Hezekiah. May people know that you are the Lord. This is the emphasis of our prayer life. It, it should always be, even no matter the personal challenges and difficulties, however small or great, Lord, answer this, we pray, so that you may get the glory. How often do we pray like that? How often do I pray like that? My prayers often are for my own comfort and joy, my own ease and, and, and relaxation in the world. It's, it's not often praying for God's name like this. And I'm challenging myself to pray like this. Lord, answer these prayers so that people may know you are God alone, that Jesus is Lord, that your kingdom matters so that they might come to know and follow you as well. Uh, read... Isaiah 37 today. Meditate on this prayer pattern of Hezekiah. Receiving the challenges. Lay them before the Lord. Seek him in prayer. And ask for his name to be lifted up. We see that God answers this for Hezekiah. However, in his generations to come after him, they would not follow after the Lord. And we know that at the end of chapter 9, 39, not really at the end of the book, but at the end of, of 39 as well, we see, we see this ultimate captivity occurring. And so the question now is, will God still care for his people? Is there hope for them? We'll start talking about that tomorrow. But today, receive that word, lay it before the Lord, seek him in prayer, Ask for his kingdom and his will and his name to be glorified and watch him answer in his time and in his way. Well, God bless you, church. Have a great Thursday. I'll see you tomorrow.